far too long, the Connecticut residents have been uh, uh, under a, a, a veil of mistruths, misconceptions, and are wrongly guided when they're attempting to make their decisions on policies that uh, affect them, and also in the future when they're in the voting booth as to who they want to represent them. And I, this came to a head when I received an email from one of my former high school teachers who said to me, Kevin, I know that you've always been a strong supporter of education, and I'm wondering why you didn't support the re-teachers this year. And I couldn't answer that question. I said, could you please send me an email uh, of the correspondence that you received so I can see what context that you're, you're speaking of? So he sent me an email, and it was generally basically this email that went out from the Connecticut Education Association. And it said, make sure you reach out to your state representatives and state senators who voted for the budget because they helped restore to 25% the state's contribution into the teacher's health care retirement fund. And as you know, the fund is divided into three separate sections, a third by the individual retiree, a third by the fund, and a third by the state. Well, last year during the budget adjustment period, the legislature attempted to reduce the fund down to 25%, which would have resulted in a 26% increase for retired teachers. I held my very first press conference last year, and I had four of my high school teachers standing behind me saying the state made a promise to fund this at 33%, and we should not push that large of an increase onto retired teachers. Well, luckily, the legislature saw the right way and changed it and fully funded it at 33%. But this year, the governor decided to propose a 0% state funding for the health care for retired teachers. And so the legislature said, well, we don't agree with that, so we're going to bring it to 25%. And the Senate Republicans offered an amendment during the debate on the budget under LCO 8690, which said, no, the state made a promise to these teachers who've given of 32 years of service generally to their local school systems that we're going to fully fund your health care retirement at 33%. However, that was defeated along party lines. You would never know that by looking at this quote that was sent out to the members of CEA. Another example is inheriting budget deficits from previous Republican administrations. I'm amazed now at the folks that, who believe that the governor of whichever party is a know-all, end-all, and they are what I consider the bus drivers. It's the legislature that determines the type of bus that the governor is going to drive, whether it's a Cadillac or a Chevrolet. The legislature provides the tools for the governor. Now, I believe that Governor Malloy is disingenuous by blaming his predecessor on the largest, one of the, the reason why we had one of the largest tax increases in the history of the state of Connecticut, saying that he inherited from Governor Rell, a Republican, a $1.3 billion budget deficit, when in fact that deficit was inherited and voted upon by the Democratic-controlled legislature here in Hartford. I recall at the time that there were only two states left in our country, we were in September, that had not passed a budget. Connecticut was being run by executive order. And there were negotiations taking place. Again, Republicans were not invited into the room. Governor Rell, in my opinion, caved, should have vetoed the budget, but did not. And the result of that budget, which is which the argument every Republican decried will cause a financial disaster in the state of Connecticut, came to be. That is what Governor Malloy inherited, a budget voted on 100% by Democrats, zero Republicans. But you won't find that fact in that quote. And lastly, the one that we're all feeling the pinch about today is the gas tax. And it's been said by the Senate Democrats that Republican leaders are howling to a tax that they led, they charged to raise. Well, let's go back to the history of that tax. 1980, Governor Ella Grasso, a Democrat, was in office. 
And once again, it goes to the ideology of the Democratic Party that they believe they should control business. At the time, home heating oil prices were going up. And so the legislature at the time, with the governor's approval, said we're going to not allow the oil companies to make that kind of money. We're going to cut into their profit margin, so we're going to create a tax, a 2% tax. And we're also going to put some legislation that says it can't be passed on to the end user, or the homeowners. But once again, the federal government had already had a suit and said you can't pass it on. So what happened was the homeowners ended up seeing the increase in their home heating oil by 2%. Well, the market corrected itself, and two years later, home heating oil wasn't an issue. So the legislature said, let's exempt home heating oil from the 2% tax increase, but we're going to keep the tax increase because it's another source of revenue for the state of Connecticut. It goes to the, the continuous addiction to spending here in Hartford. In, 19, or in 2005, there was a proposal to increase the gas tax for various projects. Many of them had to do with mass transit projects. Now, I'm lucky to live in the Hartford County of our state, and I see traffic congestion on 84 coming into Hartford, and if I travel down Route 8 in, in the Waterbury uh, mix. But that pales in comparison to the traffic of the folks that live in the Fairfield County area on I-95. You have a minor fender bender or a car broken down, you might as well plan on sitting in traffic for two to three hours. It's horrendous. So the thought was, let's raise the gas tax to provide additional funding for our roads, our bridges, and for uh, rail cars. I believe it was number 82 rail cars to be placed on the Metro North uh, rail line. At the time of the increase, gas was $1.70 a gallon on average. And the average bumped up a little bit towards the end of the year of 2005 because remember Hurricane Katrina shut down a lot of the refineries down on the Gulf Coast. So that bumped up the gas price a little bit. But that bump caused the state coffers to fill quite rapidly. And it was because of that rapid increase that the legislature rightfully said in 2008, the scheduled increase that was supposed to take place, we're going to change the law and we're going to cancel it. We're not going to allow that increase to take place. So the argument to say that it passed in 2005, let's blame them because there's nothing we can do about it, is for not. Because we've shown that we can change the law and cancel a tax increase. But once again, you won't see that in a quote. So today I'm here to introduce the Tell the Truth campaign. Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Because I believe Connecticut residents are smart enough to make an informed decision on their own. But they can only do that with being informed with all of the facts. So on my website, www.senatorwitkos.com, you'll see a red button. It says, Tell the Truth. And on that, I've picked three issues that I'm going to be talking about and you heard uh, highlights of today. The Teachers Retirement Fund, the gas tax, and the blaming of previous administrations for our, our budget deficit and our financial woes. Uh, Connecticut is not improving, in my opinion, and will not until we get spending under control and we be honest with the citizens that we were elected to represent. I've gone out to my constituents in my district and I said, if you don't like how I vote, then you should vote me out of office. And I will tell you, I will stand up here all day long and give you the reason why I'm voting the way I am. And while we may not agree 100% of the time, which I know we won't because sometimes I don't agree with myself 100% of the time, uh, we can have a great conversation, but the fact is all the facts are laid out for everybody to understand and make their own informed decision. And I hope that one day I'm able to take down this Tell the Truth campaign, but until I continuously see misinformation either on the television, the radio, newsprint, and social media, the Tell the Truth campaign will continue. And if I have to go to every corner of the state to make people aware of this fact, I will do so because they should know that there is a spot in state government that they can trust, and that's the Tell the Truth campaign. I want to thank you all for coming, and I'll answer any questions you may have.